everybody. Good evening and welcome to our introduction to bookkeeping revision session. Uh, my name is Catherine. I am one of the tutors here at Social Intuition and it will be my pleasure to take you through tonight's session. I'm just going to get, get rid of that um, ribbon at the top. There we go. So yeah, tonight it's going to be uh, task five that we will look at um, and that is going to be all things to do with supplier transactions. So we're going to be looking at checking invoices, um, checking invoices uh, against other documents and making sure that everything matches up or more likely doesn't match up, in which case, what do we um, need to change? And then also we're going to be looking at um, entries into the day books and again, making sure that they all um, tally up. It's quite a practical task, this one. So I think rather than going through a task briefing telling you how to check invoices and that sort of thing, we'll crack on and just have a go at the task and then you can see um, what happens with something like that. So um, we've got this one. Apologies, I've, I've sort of split the screen just so we can see things a bit more clearly because otherwise we're going to be doing a lot of scrolling um, up and down. Um, so example task, this is example task five. So we've, we've been told here that we've got um, two companies. So we've got Hilltop Limited, which on the 8th of December, has ordered some goods from Tree Limited and uh, Tree Limited, so they're the supplier and then Hilltop is the customer. They've agreed a 10% trade discount, hopefully all happy with what trade discounts are, because uh, you've seen them uh, elsewhere in this unit. And they've also offered payment terms of 30 days net. So again, they're telling us these things because they probably are going to crop up at some point. So it's worth just highlighting all of that um, and making sure that it works. Um, we're also told that, so I should have highlighted that we um, the order was placed on the 8th of December. The goods were delivered on the 11th of September, sorry, 11th of December, if I get my months right. And then we've got the invoice and also then further down, you'll see that we've got the purchase order. Yep. So you've got those two documents to use as you're reviewing and then on the second page we've got um, this question here so we're going to look at part a first of all and we need to be looking for these we've got six things so what the things that we've got here and we have to decide for each one whether that thing that item is correctly shown on the invoice or whether it's not correctly shown on the invoice it's incorrect in some way uh, or it might be that it's not shown at all. Yeah, so uh, it might be that there's something that was on the purchase order that's not on the invoice and really it should be, or it might just be not on there at all. So we're going to be quite methodical and go through each one. You know, we'll, we'll draw some lines across so we can see what it needs to be. So the first thing that we're going to look at, I think what I'll do is I'll try and highlight these in different colours so you can see kind of what we're looking at. The first one we're going to look at is the date. Right, so we remember from the task it said that the goods were delivered on the 11th of December. So we wouldn't expect an invoice date before that because we can't invoice really until the goods have been delivered ideally. So have we got a date on the invoice? What do we think? Feel free to put in the chat box if you want to, to chip in. That's more, more than welcome to do that. Have we got a date on the invoice that matches with with that? We do it's there. So yes, we've got an, we've got an invoice on the 11th of December, and actually it said here that the goods. I'll, tell you what, I'll get rid of that original highlight, and then you can see that we've got the same date. So we can see that the invoice date is matching the day that the goods were delivered. So that's fine. Yeah. So we can say that for the date it's shown correctly. So I've talked about that first one, talked it through with you. We'll have a look at our next one. We now need to look at the name of the customer. Okay, so who is the customer in this case? Which of the two company names have we got that is the customer? The customer name is the one that should be shown as going to the invoice is going to. Um, so they said Hill. Ah, mm -hmm. 
we can see that the invoice says Hilton Limited, but the, in, the their company name is actually Hilltop Limited. Yeah. So what does that make us think? So I'll put it, I'll put it there as well so you can see that all how it all three matches up some question information, what's on the invoice and what's on the uh, purchase order. So that's incorrect. It should be Hilltop Limited. So we can see the customer name is an incorrect entry. They need to correct the customer's name um, in order for it to be uh, all good. Everything. Now then, for this next one, you're going to need to get your calculators going. So the trade discount. So it says that, there's a, that they have been offered a 10% trade discount, which we, we know did in the uh, question information. So what we need to look at is, and, and it's actually mentioned there as well in the purchase order, have they calculated the trade discount correctly? So if we look at this section here, what do we think? Is that correct based on the rates of the trade discount? What do we think? Go on, don't be shy. Fine. Is 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 that is that thirty one pound twenty five? Is that ten percent of our net total? Being shy tonight. It is. So if we do, if we did, we just come down here. We took that and we said. 3125 times 10%. Apologies for my writing. We do that in our calculator just to make sure it comes out. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah, so they've actually not put the right thing in. Yes, thank you. Yeah, I see someone's putting correct in the chat now. That's actually wrong. They've missed a, missed a figure off the end. Yeah, so. That discount is actually also incorrect. They've not done very well. They've got the name wrong and they've also got the trade discount wrong as well. Okay, next one to look at is our, our VAT rate. Now we're not given much detail about this in the question information. We can see it's there on the invoice. Um, and it doesn't say anything on the purchase order about it. We wouldn't expect it to see. Anything on the purchase order like that. So, what about the the rate of VAT? Um, it says they're back at twenty percent. Is that a correct VAT rate? Is it correctly calculated based on the the net after the discount? I appreciate that the discount was wrong, so it's going to need um, an adjustment for that. But based on that that net after discount figure, have they calculated the VAT? Correctly. Yeah. Is that right? If we did 20% of that net after discount figure as it is at the moment, it, it will need adjusting. But have they done the right thing from the number that they had? Yes, lovely. Yeah, I think that's correct too. Yeah, I've done that on my calculator. And I think that is spot on. We know we're going to have to adjust it anyway because the invoice will need the um, discount sorting out, but based on what we know. Right, next one, we're now definitely going to have to have a look at what the um, purchase order was asking for because we're going to look at the quantity of goods delivered. Okay, so the invoice says that they've delivered 25 of these lawn mowers. Now then, what did they say on the purchase order? 25 lawn mowers. So that that is that is fine. It's a nice straightforward one. And we can say that that is correct. Okay. Final one then are our terms of payment. Get a different colour, or the darker blue this time. So the terms of payment in the question was shown was 30 days net. Um and it's also shown there as well. Have we got anything on the invoice that might need adjusting for that? Any mention on the payment terms? Can you see anything?
I don't think there's anything there. No, normally you'd find that your terms of payment will probably come in this section there, but there's nothing. So there's no terms given. So I think on that one, we haven't actually had any sections where we said that there's not, it's not shown on the invoice, but the terms of payment is not shown. So that will go to that section. So that's quite a good example of um, an invoice check-in question that you might get on this task. Um, the other thing is, is it probably you'd be drawing the, you'd be connecting the lines electronically on those um, points. So just make sure that you're you're happy with with things like that. But not too bad, I think, to start. I think this task isn't too bad actually. So the second part of it is to do with the day books. And I think. Um, do, 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 Let's just pull it to a bit of a bigger thing. Now we've not got that, that one page. There we go. That's much better, isn't it? We can see. Right. So for part B, it says that purchase invoices and purchase credit notes have been received and they've been partially entered in the both the purchase day book, which we've got there, and then we've got the purchase returns day book um, at the bottom. We now need to complete the entries by inserting the appropriate figures into the day book to get it to be complete. So we've got a lot of green cells there that um, basically we need to make sure we've got a figure in each of those. So both the purchase day book and we've got the purchase return uh, day book to do. Now, it's very, very tempting with a task like this to sort of look, to start from the left and work left to right. I think we're kind of programmed to do that. Um, but actually, it's probably a bit easier to start, if you can, from the right of the book. So start with, with, the, with this section here and then move across. You might have to do a bit of back and forth depending on which figures you're given. Um, the other thing to just be aware of with this is that sometimes you will have an invoice or a, a credit note where you've only got one of these. There might be only purchase type one or purchase type two. Sometimes you can have an element of both um, and that can be put in to trip you up on a question like this. So just be aware that to sort of check everything for sense, make sure that your VAT amount makes sense based on what the net is and, and so forth. Yeah, because if, it, if, it, if, it, if the VAT doesn't equal 20% of your purchase type one or your purchase type two on its own, probably means that you've got a purchase type two in there that um, you need to factor in and include. I don't think we've got anything like that tonight. So we'll start off with a nice straightforward one. I'll I'll talk through this first one with Hanoi Limited uh, through with you, and then we'll go through the others together. So Hanoi Limited, so we've, we're only told about the amount of purchase type one and also the VAT. Now we can assume that VAT is 20% on, on tasks like this. You know, the, the, the beginning of the exam, they'll tell you that that is 20%, unless they specifically tell you otherwise. So you have got plenty of kind of, I think I know it's only 20%, and that will help you um, for this task. So as we can say, we can see we've got some purchase type one and we've got some VAT. Now, if I did 20% of that 10,000, it should come out at the same as our VAT figure, just as um, the first glance, but you can check it. Yeah. So 20% of 10,000 is that 2,000 um, VAT. So there isn't any purchase type two. So I'll pop a zero in there and then we know we've not missed it out. Keeping it all methodical and good pro good process. And then our net will be 10,000. Yeah. See what I mean when I say work right to left? Um, because we can now look at adding the net and the VAT together to get our total, which is a nice straightforward one to start off with for 12,000 for that. Okay, we've then got Milan Limited as our next uh, purchase invoice. And this one is a bit different. We're told that um, we've got 6,000 total and 5,000 of purchase type two. So we've got a difference of 1,000 in there. Now then, we need to know the VAT, we need to know if there's any purchase type one, and then we can get the, the net. So what do we think on that one? What would our VAT figure be for that? Does it all make sense and tally up if we work across it? What is our VAT figure based on that? 
I think is what we've got. Lovely, thank you. Yes, I agree with that one. So we think that VAT is a thousand. You can do that a couple of ways, um, especially with VAT being 20%. If you divide your your gross figure, your total figure by six, that will give you the VAT portion. You also can divide that figure by uh, 120 or and then times by 100 or just divide by 1.2 and that will get you your net figure. Either way, if you do the divide by six, you'll get your VAT of a thousand and you can see that it all kind of adds together. So there's no purchase type one because otherwise our VAT wouldn't be a thousand, our total wouldn't be six thousand. Um, so yeah, that is um, absolutely fine for that one. Right, final one um, is we've got a total and we've got two lots of different types of purchases. We can add those together. So we've got 1500 as our net. And then you can either do calculate the VAT one of two ways. What do we think the VAT's going to be for that one? So it's worth calculating it both ways to make sure that you haven't made a mistake. Yeah, lovely, thank you. Yeah, so you can, as I say, you can do it two ways. You can say, well, 1,800 less 1,500 um, is 300, and it is. But you could also check it the other way and say, what's 20% of 1,500, which is 300. Or you could do 1,800 divided by six and get that, that figure. And again, it's 300. So there's there's lots of different ways um, for you to get the figures that you need. Um, and it's just about knowing what they are. Right, so the final thing then is we just need to total up. We, there's a green cell there. We don't need it because it's just for invoice numbers. And again, you can check this one way or another. Um, so we'll, I'm going to start. I'm going to work right to left. Just come a bit strange like that. And we'll just total them all up. But then I will talk to you about how we can make sure that we've got our figures correct on this bit as well. So I'm just going to work this through. You can follow it through with me. You can see what we're doing. Yeah. Okay. So hopefully that all follows through um, as you would expect. All I've done there is literally just add each column up as you've gone. But you can also then check it across. So you can, you know, make sure that it works this way as well. And that's always worth doing because um, it can be quite easy when you're tallying figures um, just to kind of miss one or make a bit of an error um, on it. So I would definitely, you know, once you've added up each column, that's the way that you want to work it. I will just then check from right to left, as I say. Right, we'll have a look at the purchase return day book for this one. So we've only got a couple here now. So actually on this one, they've kept the purchase type two figures all in white. So we know we haven't got to enter anything into here, which is quite good. Okay, so what we've got that Hanoi Limited, what are our missing figures going to be on that one? It's not a trick question. I'll, I'll, I'll put it in as well. It's not a good question. So we haven't got anything in here, uh, so we don't need to worry about that. Our net will be the same as our purchase type one, 2000. And again, we can then check that that fits with the VAT. We do 2000 times 20 percent. We get 400, and then we can add. Oh, wrong bit. Add that. So that equals that. So we can get 2400 in there. That does say 2,400, I just have total 100. Okay, this one is a little bit more um, tricky. We've got two types. We've got to do quite a lot on this one. So we've got a net of 700. So what are our missing figures going to be for that one? Oh, 
what's our back going to be, what's our total domain going to be. Lovely, thank you. Yeah, so 20% of 700 to get our VAT, and that will be 140. And we can add them together. So again, we're going to work um, methodically to check our totals. So we'll start and just check everything across. I'm going to start again on the right and work right to left. You can do it the other way around if you, if you so wish. It really is up to you. Okay. We can say that that's just that equals that, so we know that is fine. And then we've got 540 for those, and we've got 2,400. Plus, I'm using the calculator, I'm being a bit lazy. And 40, and again. We do 2700 plus 540 should get 3240, but we'll just double check it. Oh, if I can get my calculator to work properly, that's really a good one. Okay, so yeah, I mean, it, that is. Task five done. Um, so there's not not a huge amount on on this task to go through. There is only ten marks available for this, so you're not probably needing to spend a huge amount of time on it compared to other tasks on the exam. Um, but it's hopefully quite a nice, straightforward one. I think that's 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 one that's hopefully not too bad. But do just keep keep a watchful eye that you might get tripped up with with this bit where they've got maybe two different types of purchases in one and you've got you you don't know that um, trap link they like to throw in on the exam so i'll just pop that on there that is where's our second page there we go so that's oh, that's not um if you do want anything you've got any questions or anything like that you can email aat revision at fi.co.uk um yeah, anything that you need, but I'll you know, stop the recording there, if I can.